Hey everyone, the Jewish Giraffe here, back again with another video. Uh, this video is going to be one in three, a couple-ish parts. Um, the first thing I just want to talk about was something that I missed talking about in my previous video, which was, you should go watch it, the Gravity Blaster video. Um, here's the deck I'm currently working on constructing for it. Uh, all I need left for it uh, are two Gen X armies, uh, two more Gen X Ultimums, and one more Gravity Blaster until it's done. Uh, I haven't had any games with it yet, so I obviously don't know how it's going to be, but I think it's going to work well with Sar Sergeant Electro, plus all those other guys, plus everything else we've seen in there. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk about with Gravity Blaster was, there was one more thing I forgot to talk about, about how I didn't like it, and that's how, about how the current metagame is very OTK potential based these days, and it's very focused on that, how quick can you kill them, how quick, oh geez, I uh, knocked the phone off the table. How quick can you, <laughs> professional son, uh, how quick can you get all out all your combo pieces, how quick can you do everything. Uh, and stalling isn't so much a focus in this unless you're wearing down your opponent, you're milling out the cards, etc. Stalling your opponent to build yourself up is not something we're seeing a lot these days, and there's a lot of ways to go around it. And that's just another small reason why I think Gravity Blaster is a little bit um, inferior to other things, but I still obviously want to use it because I think it's a really cool card and I do want to try and figure out some other cool things that go along with it. Uh, second part of this video that I want to talk about, I'm just holding up two fingers there, you can't really see that, I don't know why I did that. Um, so I, re I was recently in San Diego on a little bit of vacation and I wasn't able to watch YouTube, but I did have my phone and I was playing Duel Links a little bit and at the end of the, my event I was like, oh, I should make a deck for uh, Venu the Bright Bird of Divinity, whatever, and it's pretty garbage, but this is the deck I came up with, and motherfucking Guns Blazing coming out with almost exactly the same deck, didn't watch this video or anything like that until I got home, and I saw that, and I was like, well, that's the deck I made too, if only I had been able to put out a video before he did that. Um, I do have three, I was trying this out with three um, venues with three Primal Cries, but it just wasn't working out because I don't have three Sonic Birds or three Senjus, and I don't want to go farm for all of them. Uh, it could be done with uh, three of each, but it'd be really difficult to find things to put them over in this. Um, additionally, I would run another Super Rush Headlong over perhaps the Magical Arm Shield, but I don't have another one. That's something I'm working on doing right now. Um, this deck has been okay. I did like maybe eight to ten games with it, and I won like maybe half to a little over half with them. Uh, but that's not really what I want to talk about in this video. Uh, that was just a small piece of it. The mo the main thing I want to talk about is something I've been trying or I've been really excited to do for a long time, which is my grave keeping deck, my grave keepers. Um, and this is the deck I've been using. It's been really successful, which was really surprising. It's been holding its own versus Naturia, uh, Ice Barrier, uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon, uh, etc. Lots of things that they're the only thing in the meta right now. The only thing that it really can't handle, unless you get really lucky, is Toons. Uh, oh, and Mill. Uh, Mill is really bad for this deck, and Toons are almost impossible to beat with this deck. Uh, it was really funny, so this morning I was playing uh, around with Mako, and I lost twice in a row to Toons, and then I lost to um, someone... Oh, I, I just DC'd from the beginning, which was stupid, and I ranked down from... Uh, Legend 2 to Legend 1, I thought, oh well, I'll load up some tunes. uh, why not, that usually bounces me back. I was playing tunes, didn't encounter another single tune player, but I was getting tilted off with these crazy bad hands and these crazy players, it was insane, so I thought, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna start playing Gravekeepers. Uh, I was doing great with that, I played maybe 30 games total today, that includes my venue though, or no, I probably played 40 games today, including venue, uh, and I got Gravekeepers going in there too, and I won a lot of games. Uh, I have been, it was like loss, win, 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 loss, win, win, win. Uh, so I never actually let, uh, leveled back up from Legend 2 to Legend 3, but let me go over the pieces. Uh, first off, Dark Journal Freed. You want to run only one of these in this deck. It's really good because you, you can have one of these on the field at the same time as all the other Gravekeepers. It's great. It negates any spell effects. It's so good. So good. Um, yeah, and then you can uh, add one level 4 Dark Monster from your deck. In this case, it's only the Legion, the Fiend Jester. Uh, there, I was trying it out with two, but I think one is probably best. Uh, too bad there aren't any other like viable four-star Gravekeepers. Fucking Spear Soldier, don't even talk to me about that. Um, maybe you could run that over a Priestess, but I think Priestess is really good because uh, the Priestess and the Chief and to bring back the Priestess, uh, so you've got that nice 2100 beater is really good. Uh, obviously three recruiters because three recruiters, two oracles because it's nice. I do have three chiefs, but I found two to be good. Uh, I, if 
you don't have a free to put another chief in, that's what I would say. Uh, I only have two double summons, so only two. I only have two soul exchanges, so only two. Uh, otherwise, I could see it. You really don't need the anti magic arrows. They're nice in certain circumstances, but they're not incredibly necessary, so you don't need them all the time. I am a big fan of the mirror wall, just uh, putting in one. If I had two, I still think I would only put in one because it's really good. So if you had another soul exchange double summon, I could see you putting it in over the anti magic arrows or the mirror wall. I would keep the mirror wall of the anti magic arrows, but that's just me. Uh, and then also a, um, what is it? Uh, so you, you don't want to, if you have your freed out, I think it doesn't work with Super Rush Headlong. Uh, I think uh, if you target it to yourself, it just negates the effect. So I had tested it out, but I never actually got into that circumstance, but I just read somewhere online that that's what happens. So I decided not to mess around with it and I took it out. And it's been good so far. So uh, I just wanted to show off a couple replays, not so much show off, but I wanted to show, like a two, I have, uh, I think three replays from it. Uh, Oh, and then one last thing I want to talk about before I get into that, actually. Uh, I finished the game. Yeah, so stage 60, done. It took, a, it took a while, but it was good. The hardest part of everything out of all of it was getting my hands onto... Uh, I don't know which ones are which. I don't recall which one this is, but I know the last one is Ice Barrier. that I'll show you, and the one before that, I believe, is a really long video of um, uh, Naturia. But yeah, we'll get into that. The, the hardest thing for me was getting the perfectly ultimate great moth. I never actually got one, and I know this is gonna sound so stupid, but I used my dual reward to get it uh, for 60. Uh, yeah, I mean there there was no chance of me getting. I dueled uh, Weevil. Prob. I spent so many keys on that. It was it was terrible. So anyway, starting off this game, uh, I have the chief and I have the dark drone freed. Ah, yes, that's right. That's one thing I'll talk about. This is how you take on uh, Sacred Phoenix. This guy is running a little bit of a weird Sacred Phoenix deck because I don't think he has Fire King Island, if I remember this replay correctly. I battled maybe a dozen or so uh, Sacred Phoenixes today, so I'm a little jumbled up on which one's which. But yeah, so we do end up setting the Recruiter. He's got his Cards of the Soul going, so he's already got two Sacred Phoenixes in his hand. Uh, we do have the Enemy Controller set, and we do have the two monsters here. So we do see him coming in with the Fire King Avatar Yaksha, uh, which we are able to econ away, which is nice. Um, and then from here, we are able to econ around, tribute this, get the Yaksha, and since the recruiter's going, I think we pick up another chief. No, we pick up the Oracle this time. Yeah, we pick up the chief on the. Are we summon the chief on this one so we can get the Oracle back? Oracle, God, they have all got the same archetype, so I keep saying the same names over and over again. Uh, yeah, but he, there is a pause between it, which does lead me to believe that he have he has a Karibo, uh I think in this one, just from that little pause I saw right there. Uh, oh no, this is the guy, okay, this is the only one of the time that I saw that didn't lead off with Fire King Island. Uh, I guess he just didn't have it, so he goes for the beatdown here, I've got nothing to take it on, uh, so he is able to take out my chief. But luckily, we do have that nice powerful oracle in the back, so we get the oracle and we have the anti-magic arrows, so no matter what he's got in the back, if it's, uh, I don't know, a mirror wall, I did, I've, I've been seeing a lot of these guys tech in mirror walls and tech in, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, dull magical, or er, magical arm shield, or magical arm bind, whatever. Uh, yeah, so we are able to take on this guy. I know I'm not narrating super well, it's like midnight right now, so, uh, I just want to do this because I'm not going to have a lot of time coming up. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just, you need to have the right combo pieces with this deck. Uh, here, this is going to be a long one, so sorry about that. We're only, uh, less than 10 minutes in, so this video is probably going to be 15 minutes or less. Uh, this one's up against Nachuria. Nachuria is one of the easier ones to beat with this deck. Uh, Red Eyes is one of the harder ones, but you can still do it for sure. Uh, just had this <laughs> duel actually, these last two, um, and I, I, I had a really good time with this one because it came really down to the wire. So we've got a pretty good starting hand actually, and we're just gonna start off with the Priestess. Uh, it's really good if you just have one of the monsters that you... Uh, if you have a recruiter in the beginning, I'd say that's best, but Priestess is still fine. It is able to beat uh, Naturia because they can't get over its 1700 defense without any of the uh, Tribute Summon monsters, or uh, Special Summon, I guess, in the case of Hydrangea. But uh, yeah, he does take that 300 damage, so we are going to be able to Soul Exchange. Some might consider this a misplay here, um, but I personally think it was the right play. Um, just because I want to get out of that freed and 
I don't know. I think if I went for the Chief and do attack, uh, and he was able to normal summon this on his next turn, he still would have been able to kill my only monster on the field and I would have been left out, and I would have had nothing here. Um, I would have been open, so I only have one recruiter. And overall, I think that was fine. He doesn't summon anything else. He goes in, takes out my Priestess, and here's where I can get some of the nice combos going. Um, I'm going to sack the recruiter for the Chief, use the recruiter to pick up an Oracle, I believe. Um, but first I'm gonna bring out another priestess. I got the double summon and the soul exchange. So it's- no, 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 that's right. So here- here's where I wanna- I wanna clarify one thing real quick. Uh, I was thinking about picking up an oracle, but I know if I do that, um, and I take out my own priestess with a double summon, he could have- I don't have my anti-magic arrows, and he could have a super rush headlong in the back, and bam, everything's gone from there. So I know- I know I can't have two chiefs. But I have the feeling just from playing the Churia people, this guy's an idiot. And <laughs> I just have that feeling. So I'm really banking right here that this guy um, either has an Econ and the Econ sacks his thing to take one of my chiefs so that I can actually summon out my other chief when I go in for the soul exchange. Or he lets me soul exchange it off um, and then I just summon in the chief and... I don't think it'll actually let me summon is a thing. I've never actually tried it. I think it just, it either destroys one of your chiefs or it just doesn't let you summon it. So I'm just praying that he goes for the econ play, sacks his thing, not realizing what's gonna happen. Uh, so what happens here? I go in for the double summon first, then into the soul exchange. He knows I have the chief in the hand. Uh, so what happens here? He actually goes for the enemy controller play, and I was so happy when this happened because it got rid of his one beat stick that could take care of everything. So uh, I do summon uh, my own chief here just so I could summon it and bring back uh, my recruiter and my other one goes to the graveyard. It was going to be the same play no matter what, I just pretty much got rid of the recruiter in my hand. Uh, putting it in the graveyard for whatever purpose. Uh, I really didn't need to do that, but I just felt like... I don't know, it, it felt like a right play. Um, so here I'm attacking in with my Chief. I figure he's got a Super Rush Headlong in the back, but there I, I want to burn up his uh, assets in the back. So I can't attack into that again because everything's dark. He sets here, and or he turns to defense position. That leads me to believe that he doesn't have a super another Super Rush Headlong. That's all I can think from here, is that there is no more Super Rush Headlong. Otherwise, he probably would have... I felt like this guy would have attacked offensively uh, using that. So here, especially since I had no hand, and I didn't have a Kribo or any other way to get around it. Uh, he does have a Kribo as I'm trying to attack in with my Legion the Fiend Jester, and then I go in with a Chief, and he does have another Super Rush Headlong, which was crazy, uh, because he could have easily taken out my Chief the previous turn. I guess his one thing is that he didn't want to leave it in attack position in case I drew into another monster, and then he would have taken the damage, so he wanted to play a little defensively. So I do bring out my Legion of Fiend Jester again, set my Mirror Wall, uh, he goes for the Windstorm. This this whole game is back and forth, back and forth crazy, and all I can do is pray that he doesn't have a Tribute Monster. Bam, he gets a Tribute Monster right off the bat. Um, so at least I have the Mirror Wall. I'm able to take it, take this hit, and I'm going to have his attack, which is fantastic. He takes the damage, and I pay for the Mirror Wall here because I need to get rid of that Hydrangea. It's so important I get rid of that Hydrangea. Uh, and now I just have to summon the Recruiter because I need damage on this guy, and I need damage bad. So we go in with that, take that nice 250, and he's going to take another 1300, bringing him lower, but not low enough. Uh, he is at 1715 here, I'm at 1800, so very close. I still do have the mirror wall up. He brings out a tribute to the Doomed, gets rid of uh, the Saw Bug, Saw Beetle, whatever in there. I pull another double summon, not what I needed. If I had a monster, another recruiter, it would have been great. Uh, our decks are running pretty low, so he gets down to 550 here. I do have a double summon down, uh, kind of bluffing that as anything else, really. And I had pull an Econ this turn, and what did he pull up in the previous turn with no hand? He got a Sphere Crevo, uh, letting the match go on just a little bit longer for him. And it gets a little bad here. He does... Uh, okay, so I want to talk about this other player for one second. So he pulls out a Marone, and he's going to send um, his Stag Beetle, that's what's called, not Saw Beetle, to the graveyard. And here he pulls two Stag Beetles, actually. I think his better play would have been to pull out a Hydrangea, the one he has in the graveyard, because that means there's a higher chance of Hydrangeas being in the deck, which means it's a higher chance of him Tribute Summoning this turn, uh, or not having Tribute Summon this turn, instead he can Special Summon, and that's going to make uh, his life a whole lot easier. So he's got a small chance to pull Hydrangea this turn. Of course he pulls the Hydrangea, because this game is never easy. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I am able to econ here, so I was thinking maybe if I had another, if I pull another econ, I could econ take, <coughs> make one of those plays. Uh, but I'm not, I've got another recruiter here, so I'm going to sack it, and my plan at this point is to just, um, so I see what I have in my deck. I have, the only Gravekeeper's monsters I actually have left are this Oracle and a Priestess. So I know next turn, he just, hopefully he doesn't pull another monster. Uh, he, because if he pulls his, um, another, what's it called, pumpkin, uh, he gets to attack another recruiter, kill it, and then attack with Hydrangea, and then I lose. Period. So what I need here is he gets no monster, uh, he attacks with Hydrangea, kills off recruiter, next turn I summon Priestess, summon Oracle, 2000 defense, drop, kill, win. That is what I need here, and I'm, uh, I also just need him to not have another Super Rush headlong. Or Super Rush, yeah, headlong. I always get recklessly and headlong confused. So he does set a card here, which is leading me to believe that he does have another one of the Super Rush. Uh, but at the same time, I'm just praying, because there's no other play that I have uh, to do it. I do get the Econ here. So there. if I did think he had a Super Rush, what I could have done here is summoned Econ, take, go for game. But if he has an Econ, if he has um, anything really, that's it. That's game. And he's got me beat. And I hadn't seen any seen any enemy controllers up to this point. I hadn't seen any uh, like a Curse of Anubis or anything. So I was thinking maybe it is one of those. And I think my better play is to just go for the double summon, bring out the Oracle, drop him, and I don't think he's got the Super Rush. So we are able to drop him down to zero, going for the attack, and it's a mirror wall. And at this point, I am just fist pumping like, yeah, we got him. Uh, Oracle coming through. Two cards left in the deck which was amazing. Um, if he did have another Super Rush, it would have been really bad, but I'm really glad we didn't. Oracle showing off how good it is, and here's one last game versus Ice Barriers. Uh, Ice Barriers are such an annoying deck to beat, because if they pull the nuts, they pull the nuts, and that's just pretty much game over. Um, God, with Taya's uh, dual standby, it's just, it, they get the nuts so often. I hate the fucking nuts, don't you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we're going first up here versus this Ice Barrier deck, and I'm thinking, oh god, it's Taya, I haven't played this. I actually never played Mill with, um, Gravekeepers. I just know it's gonna lose versus it, though. Uh, so I never actually took the risk. So here I just decide, fuck it, I'll lead out the Recruiter and drop both my Econs. I don't know what he is yet, so I'm thinking, oh boy, if he's Mill, it doesn't even matter. Then I see the Moray of Greed, and I thought, oh god, Ice Barrier, this is gonna be great. He shows the Dice Sojo. He shows the General Grunard, whatever, uh, drops those in, draws three, and things are just going to start going downhill from here as he is able to pull the Magic Triangle. Uh, not good for me. Dropping the Samurai, the General Grunard, and the Daisojo is able to take on my Recruiter, which is fine because it's sent to the Graveyard, and I am able to pull something out. He does summon, I believe, the, yeah, the Grunard. I'm still learning all their names. I don't have like any of these guys because uh, I have no gems. I'm free to play. So here he brings out the Dance Princess Lolly, whatever, and here I actually make a little bit of a misplay uh, as he is able to pull up his thing and he's going to target both of mine. Now I'm only able to activate one of mine in response, which I think is a little bit annoying. I thought I should have been able to activate both in response because they're both being targeted, but based on the targeting rules, I can only activate one of them. And I mean to click on Grenard, but I accidentally click on uh, the other one to change it to defense position. Doesn't really matter anyway, because I know what he's got in his hand. He changes it to defense position, and he uh, tributes here for, what's the known, Dai Sojo, and it immediately changes it to defense position. So that's fine, he's got that defensive. Uh, I'm down to 1,200 attack points, though, and it sucks. Uh, here I have to pray I get a soul exchange. Thank you, God. But no, I don't get a soul exchange, actually. Um, <laughs> I get a Priestess, and I'm just able to enemy controller do this whole play, do these whole shenanigans. Uh, destroy that because it's pretty much all I've got at this point. Um, he draws and he summons and luckily it's just this. If it was another Grenard that would have been game but um, we're down to 600 as he's got out his Samurai and here I pull the Soul Exchange which I was super happy about. Uh, Soul Exchange off his, uh, I don't even know what that one was called, yeah the Daisojo for the Chief. Uh, we're able to pull up the Recruiter and we go attack attack. Wait no, just one attack. Next, God, I'm, I'm so out of it right now. Uh, Soul Exchange, so he ends up sacking his own monster so he can draw. Uh, Mill would be really good versus this, I, is what I'm just coming to believe right now, because this this has already run through itself so much. Uh, 
here I get rid of the Priestess just so I can catch up because uh, I'm talking like an idiot right now. So this deck doesn't actually run any recovery, which is the other thing I've realized about it. There's no enemy controllers, there's no, um, I, I saw one that had a uh, Sphere Karibo, that was it. Um, so here we're able to leave him with 100 life points thanks to the Chief into Oracle combination. And he quits, and that's it. Uh, I assumed he only had uh, monsters that couldn't beat this or lower level things. So he pretty much had to draw into, if he had three separate things in there and he drew into Magic Triangle, maybe he'd have a chance. But who cares, because we won. And that's the most important thing. Still in Legend 1, uh, yeah, how long has this video been going on? 20 minutes, actually, that's way too long. Uh, this is the Jewish Ref signing off. Just wanna, I'll put out another video sometime this week. Not sure on what, maybe on Gen X if I'm able to finish that deck. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of these decks and of these replays and everything. If you have any suggestions for music decks, anything, anything you want to see me do, uh, let me know down below. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, I made a Discord channel, and I'm going to put that either in the uh, description of this video or the next one, depending once I get everything going on for that. So yeah, uh, read the description. It'll say more things about that. Uh, this is the Jewish Raft signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.